Sometime during the 1920s, Ward has landscape architect William Pitkin Jr. of Rochester to design a landscape and planning plan for Lemoyne Manor. Irving Hames, sales agent to Houston Barnard, the land developer in Rochester, wins a couple dozen commissions for Ward in Rochester using Ward's watercolors. One of the first homes built in Rochester in 1921 by Ward. This house for Theodore Drescher at 149 Westminster Road. Next in Rochester, this grand house designed for Charles Pembroke. Built at 75 Rosner Road, this house is adorned with cut glass and several Mercer tiled fireplaces. Back to Syracuse, this colonial style house for H.C. Peters at 1402 James Street. 125 Pelham Road in Rochester for H.S. Moody. Philip E. Kroll and the Wards were good friends. Ward designs this house for Philip Kroll at 504 Old Liverpool Road next door to Moyerdale. Dorothy Kroll and Peggy Ward were good friends. They used to race up and down these stairs. Plus a nice mercantile fireplace. Another in Ward's circle of friends, Eric W. Will, has this house built by Ward at 122 Rugby Road. Job 235 for Seymour Skiff at 1300 Court Street. On June 10, 1922, H.A. Moyer's wife and Maud and Bert's mother, Rosemond Wilcox Moyer, passes away just short of her 68th birthday. She is buried at Woodlawn Cemetery. Bert Moyer's son, Edward, and his wife, Marie Moyer, had their first child, Karen Moyer, August 7, 1922. Syracuse, New York. October 3rd, 1922. This envelope contains a dollar bill which Mrs. H. A. Moyer laid aside during my financial difficulties in 1897 for the purpose of being sure of saving a dollar. This bill must not be spent for anything on any conditions during my lifetime and when I have passed away this bill must be given to my daughter Maud Moyer Ward to be kept by her during her lifetime and not to be spent for anything. H. A. Moyer. H. A. Moyer takes in any Ed Wilcox who had just survived being struck by lightning. The spell was used at H. A. Moyer's Moyerdale home. It was used to ring for the servants. This was the dinner bell. H. A. Moyard hired a young black maid. Her name was Millie. Her previous employer was Ethel Barrymore, the famous actress. Millie also loved the racetrack at the New York State Fairgrounds. Millie soon grew bored with life in Syracuse and went back to Hollywood, California. Back in 1916, Charles Estabrook bought 31 acres of land in Fayetteville for his future home. In 1922, Charles Estbrook asked Ward to design his home and the outbuildings on his estate. First up, the gardener's cottage, stable, and garage, all built in 1922. In 1923, Ward completes one of his largest homes on the Estbrook estate, a Tudor Revival beauty that evokes an English hall or manor house. The Estabrook House is number 23 on the National Register of Historic Places and located at 7262 West Genesee Street in Fayetteville, New York. Mercer tile floors and fireplaces are seen throughout the house. Also included, fine leaded glass by Keck by the Keck Studio. Front and rear views of the house.
Charles Estbrook lived at the estate until 1975 when he passed away at the age of 96. After the estate sale and sale of surrounding property, his acreage was reduced to around 11 acres. In 1977, Tom Thomas bought the Estabrook estate. The great house entered into its new life as a catering service and reception center. Tom Thomas renamed the estate to the Wellington House in Ward's honor. Number 24 in the National Register. The H.N. Hoffler House at 2669 East Genesee Street. This house contains leaded glass from the Keck Studios. Mercer Floor Tiles. And Stone Fireplace. Some of the bathroom fixtures are original. 1384 Highland Avenue in Rochester. Designed for Pearl M. Van Deventer. Job 235, again in Rochester. This time for Mr. and Mrs. Walter Will at 165 Grosner Road. This beautiful English style house was built in 1923. The house looks different from every angle. The Wills worked closely with Ward, even doing some of the work themselves. Mr. Will carved the fronts of the built-in dressers, while Mrs. Will hand-painted the ceiling beams. The Will's daughter still lives in the house. Number 25 on the National Register, 301 Scotland Boulevard in Syracuse, and built for A.F. Sanderson. With a marble fireplace and leaded glass bookcases, this was Ward's model electric house. Its electrical systems were ahead of their time. The garage was built first by Ward and was reportedly used as the real estate office for the Scott Home development. Job number 237 this design for H.F. Collins at Barney Street in Governor, New York was not built. It resembles the Bradley Fuller House at 215 Salt Springs Road. Job number 242 in Rochester for Vernon Stone at 40 Pelham Drive. Job 243 is for Frederick J.C. Dininger at 115 Pelham Road in Rochester. A large Tudor revival, this house contains a beautiful Mercer tile fireplace and even contains a secret room. This is the garage on the property. Number 26 on the National Register, located at 2205 East Genesee Street. For John J. Kelly. 1416 James Street for Holly Van Swall. 700 Allen Street for Anna Stowerer. The Beta Theta Pi Fraternity House, located at 722 Comstock Avenue. Now, 711 Comstock Avenue. Job number 250. This prairie style house at 150 Pelham Road was built for Peck W. Farley. It has a grand cut stone entrance, gorgeous woodwork, marble fireplace, rear of the house, plus a matching garage.